Moving on to an example, we have to find the inverse of f of x equals x plus 5 over 2. And as we did in the previous overview video, I'm going to find the inverse in four different ways. So I kept all four ways written out from the previous video just for convenience sake. However, in each way, I'll be going through the process a lot more quicker. So if you haven't, make sure that you watch the previous overview video where I go through each of these four steps in a lot more detail. So the first way to finding an inverse is through a table of values. So the first thing we have to do is make a table of values for the function that we're given x plus 5 over 2. So I made a table of values here with x values negative 2 to a positive 2. So for example, plugging in negative 2 into this function, we have negative 2 plus 5, which is 3, and then 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. And respectively, we did it for the rest of the points. And to get the table of values of the inverse, what do you do? Well, you just take each of these points and interchange them. So the x becomes a y and the y becomes an x. So here we'd have 1.5 for the x value and negative 2 for the y value. And same thing for the rest of the points, interchanging each of them. So 2.5 and 0. 3 and 1, and then 3.5 and 2. Now the second way of finding an inverse is algebraically. So I'm going to take the function that we're given and rewrite it here, but instead of f of x, I'm going to put a y. So y is equal to x plus 5 over 2. And now what we do is we interchange the x and y values. So x equals y plus 5 over 2. And then we isolate for y. So we can cross multiply here. So we'd have 2x equals y plus 5. And then bring the 5 over. So we'd have 2x minus 5 equals y. Or if we uh, switch everything over, y equals 2x minus 5, just to make it look nicer. So this here represents the inverse of this function. And we can rewrite it with notation. This f of negative 1x equals 2x minus 5. The third way in finding an inverse is through a graph. So I started off by graphing the original function that we were given, x plus 5 over 2. And you can just take the table of values and plot the points. And it should be a straight line. It doesn't look like a straight line in, uh, in my graph, but it should be. And if you think about it, you can rewrite this function as 1 half x plus 5 over 2 if you split up the term into two fractions and that represents a line it represents this line and then finally this is our inverse function here 2x minus 5 i just took our points in the table of values from step one and i plotted them on the same graph so again this here represents our original function f of x and this here represents our inverse um, 2x minus 5. They're both lines. And if you look closely, you might not be able to see it with, uh, with my horrible drawing, but both of these lines are reflections of each other along the line y equals x. This here, this line would be y equals x. Each corresponding point is just interchanged and reflected over the line. So for example, this point here, this represents 2 and 3.5. Well, this um, point, when it's reflected over y equals x, we end up getting 3.5 and 2. This point here is 1 and 3. And then when we reflect over the line y equals x, we get 3 and 1. And then same thing for all of the respective points. Again, the process is you graph the function f of x and then reflect it over the line y equals x and you end up getting the inverse. And the fourth and final way to find an inverse is to reverse the operations in reverse order. So with our original function x plus 5 over 2, what are we doing? Well, we're taking an input x or a number x. We add 5 to it 
and then we divide everything by 2 and we end up getting our output f of x. So to find the inverse we would just go in the reverse order and we would reverse all of the operations. So we take an input x, we would multiply it by 2 which is the reverse operation of dividing it by 2 and then we would subtract 5 which is the reverse operation of adding 5 and we would get our output, our inverse. And notice how that's the same as what we got up here. So again we take an input x, multiply it by 2 and then subtract 5 and that is our inverse.